Hello, it's me again, Elizabeth. I'm gonna try again <laughs> for the third time to do Mrs. Crochet and Coffee's one hour whip and chat challenge. Um, with me being new to YouTube, I thought it would be fun, be a good way to answer some questions about myself that, you know, things I don't think about to say, like, I'm not used to talking about myself, nobody wants to know that, blah, 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 that kind of stuff, and I got to realize and remember that you guys don't know me, um, so it's kind of like starting from the very beginning up until now, so I'm going to try this again, I borrowed my husband's tablet and just pulled up some questions, I'm going to try to keep an eye on the time, see if I can make it to an hour so I can meet her challenge. As I said in one of my other videos that, you know, I try not to give up. I try to do something until I get it right. So I'm going to keep trying this until I get it right. Um, okay. And I'm still working on my custom from Ever Moment. Uh, it's a sonogram photo that I've lovingly dubbed the blob. Um, I didn't get too much done yesterday. Um, hoping maybe I can finish this section tonight. In, in an hour, maybe, <laughs> we'll see, that'll be another test for me. Um, so let's just get started here. All right, first question says, where did you grow up? Well, I've actually lived in the same place essentially all my life, um, except for about the four months I moved out of town to try to go to college, but I'm not gonna count that because it wasn't long term. But I've always lived in the same county um here in North Carolina um I've moved I've lived in a couple of different places but always in the same county and I think that's that's kind of neat we're a military town there's an air force base here and um so a lot of the people I know from growing up and everything you know a lot of the friends I made were military kids or as they called themselves military brats so they would always, you know, come and go. So it was, you know, constant revolving of friends and stuff. Um, but I always got left here <laughs> when they would move. So that made it kind of hard to form some friendships and develop some bonds sometimes. But, you know, I figured it out, as kids do. Kids are resilient. Um, number two... What is the earliest memory I have? Okay, well this is really, really weird. And I, 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 I know I have this memory. I know it's a genuine memory because I've asked my mom about it before. But basically, I'm sitting on a couch. I'm probably like five or six years old. And I remember the shoes I had on. They were these little blue tennis type shoes that had Velcro attaches or like not, they weren't tying laces or anything, but they were Velcro straps. And the brand on them was Zip or Zips, something like that. But I was wearing those shoes and on the TV was a, some type of nature show talking about snakes. Because I remember talking about how if I ever ran into a snake, I would step on it with my zips. And, oh, let me tell you, that is not the case. If I ever see a snake, I'm running the other direction. I'm not going to even try to step on it with any type of shoe. Uh, so I had quite the imagination there with my little blue Velcro tennis shoes. Uh, what would I do with the money if I won the lottery? Oh, boy. Okay. That's a loaded question. Um, first thing I would do was, I think, whatever, well, almost everybody says, is get out of debt. Oh my God. I would love to not owe anybody or any business, any bank. I don't want to owe anybody anything. I want to be free and clear. Um, I would... I want to do some type of humanitarian or 
what's the word, uh, charitable type donation. I don't know whether it be monetary or like say if there's an orphanage that needs a new building or needs a school or something like that, like pay for them to build a school, something like that. But I would want to be anonymous. I don't want to do anything for any recognition or any notoriety. I just want to know in my heart that me making that donation or providing that building or whatever the case may be make, makes a difference. Um, of course, I would splurge. I'd buy some stuff. I'd buy some diamond paintings. <laughs> I'd buy some craft supplies. Um, I'd get a nicer, larger house for my family and I. Uh, my husband wants a, his dream kitchen. He wants this huge kitchen with this island and this, uh, what's it called? A farm sink or something. One of those huge big sinks. Anyway, we don't have the room for all that now. He's trying to work it out to where we can knock out some walls and make it work in this house. But I just don't think it'll work. But I think it'd be fun to be able to give him his dream house in that way. Um... You know, things like that. College fund for the daughter. You know, different things like that. And, and I'd have to really sit and think hard about how to save some of the money so that it has longevity. You know, I don't know. Do I need to put it to work for me? Do I need to invest it? Do I need to hide it under a mattress? I don't know. I, I, I would want to be smart about it. But that's really never gonna happen because I don't play the lottery, so I'm not a I'm not a gambler in that aspect. So, eh. so I just sit back and pretend and make up my dreams about it. What could I have done to make today more productive? Oh, well, I feel like I usually do pretty good being productive. Um, at work, you know, I don't, like, I don't, I don't want to say I don't have a choice, but I have a choice, but I try to focus on my work while I'm at work and make a dent in what I do. Um, sometimes it doesn't feel like I've made any progress at all, <laughs> but other times my hand will tell me something different. I do, it's basically data entry. And if I get home and my hand is really hurting, then that tells me either it's raining outside <laughs> or I did a lot of work that day. Um, so I kind of use that as a gauge sometimes because you can't really go by numbers and what the computer says because it's a constant flow. As soon as I get something out of the system and processed, about five things come in to take its place. So can always go by that to judge my productivity. Alright, gotta take a sip of water. Okay, would you rather have flying reindeer or a unicorn? Oh my gosh. Flying reindeer or a unicorn? Well, I'm going to go with unicorn because I want them to be like they're depicted in Harry Potter, <laughs> um, where they're the, a beautiful creature, um, looks just like a horse except for, you know, the horn. Um, and I was just, I was, you know, thinking if they really would have silver blood, that'd be awesome, but I wouldn't want to see their blood. I mean, that's. That's ridiculous, right? Um, but yeah, unicorn, like from Harry Potter. Not one of the, like, cartoony, rainbow-colored hair, that type of unicorn. Unless it really did fart rainbows. Now, if it was a rainbow-farting unicorn that had rainbow-colored hair, then hell yes. Give me that. Because I will take that thing... Everywhere I go. Because, you know, what was it Petco allows any animals to come inside if they're on, as long as they're on a leash? So you best believe I would be taking my unicorn up in Petco 
to fart around some rainbows and spread some cheer on the good folks that are around there. If I had to wear one item forever, what would it be? Um, well, had I not lost it, I would say it would be the Mother of Pearl cross charm on a necklace that my great aunt got as a souvenir when she visited Israel. Unfortunately, when my mother did give that to me, I did wear it and I did love it. I wore it almost every day. But one morning I woke up, I went to church, got out of the car, walked to the Sunday school class and realized that the necklace was no longer around my neck. I have no idea what happened to it. I didn't feel it break off. I didn't feel it fall. I searched everywhere. I tore apart the car. I scoured the parking lot, the bathroom in the church. I looked everywhere. I was so broken hearted because, you know, it was not only a beautiful piece of jewelry, it was, you know, a family heirloom that can't be replaced. So that really bummed me out. But I am glad that I at least did wear it and use it for its intended purpose. You know, not like those fancy bathroom soaps that are like flowers and really beautiful and they smell nice, but you can't ever use that soap. You know, it's just for decoration, but it's soap. <laughs> um, so that bums me out. So that would, that would be my answer. But since that's not a possibility anymore, and since now that I'm married, I'm going to say my wedding ring. Um, if I could also have my engagement ring, of course I'd love that. But if I, you know, if it's just the wedding band itself, you know, that'd be fine. And, and I hate, that, that's so materialistic sounding. But I really do love my, my wedding band set. I love it. <laughs> If I had to kiss, marry, and kill YouTubers, who would you choose and what would you do to, what would you do with to them? That, okay. What would you do with or to, uh, I don't know if that wording is wrong, but what an awful question. That's horrible. I wouldn't want to kill, I don't want to kill anybody. So nobody. That's just, I don't even want to think about it. Unless we want to count Momo. Isn't that the name of that, that creepy looking thing that was going around not too long ago about, you know, she was pop up on videos on YouTube kids and tell them to hurt themselves and to burn down the houses and stuff. So, okay, yeah, let's do that. Let's kill Momo. She got to go. Um, well, I'm not going to kiss anybody. And I'm not going to, you know, no. Mm-mm. So yeah, let's just go with that. We'll kill Momo and call it a day. Um, what is a question you want to answer but nobody asks? Well, I don't know how to answer that. Because I'm one of the nobodies that doesn't ask the question. Like, even in my head, I can't think of the question. So I don't know. Um, but I'm pretty open. You know, if anybody asks me something, I will answer it not that big of a deal. I don't have that many secrets. You know, I'm not working for the government. I don't have security clearance. Not that special. <laughs> Which cartoons do you still watch? Oh my god. Okay. So, one of the other questions I had on a prior video was, what do you watch on Netflix or whatever? Well, I don't know why I didn't think about this, but if you have Netflix, and if you haven't already, you need to watch Big Mouth. If you don't mind a certain level of crude humor, um, it gets pretty explicit at some points, but it is seriously funny and so relatable. Even though it's a cartoon, it's definitely not for kids. Um, but it's basically talking about these teenage young teenagers or these preteens going through puberty and man 
it is so funny. Um, it, they've got their hormone monsters in there. They talk about all kinds of different stuff. And there's one episode where one of the girls gets starts her period. And there's a whole song. And it's just, oh my god, it's great. You need to watch it. It's called Big Mouth on YouTube. On YouTube, listen to me. Big Mouth on Netflix. What show do you watch that isn't targeted for your age group? Well, I mean, I what what shows are targeted for 38-year-olds? I don't know. I'm not that into ageism. I watch anything just about. Um, except for scary stuff. But so I'm just I I'll, I'll, I'll just say cartoons. Like okay, Disney movies, for example. You know, their target audience is probably the younger kids with some of their animated movies or even even maybe for their live action stuff i don't know in my mind that's geared towards children because of course children are going to see it and mommy daddy i want to go and i'll be one of those parents like yeah i want to go too let's go um If you could have one talent, what would it be? Um, talent. Oh, geez. I think I kind of wish I could dance. <laughs> I've got no moves. I took ballet. Growing up, I took ballet for, I don't know, six years or so, um, but I quit, and kind of wish I hadn't quit as early as I did now, but, I mean, what are you going to do? I really, I did enjoy it, but I started, you know, started getting moody, started, you know, being a teenager, and, you know, I, I was too cool for ballet, yeah, I wish I had known better, but even as an adult, going out to a club, I saw some of my friends, oh man, they could dance, like, to the beat of the music and everything, you know, I am, I'm just, I don't even know what to, what to say about describing me dancing, trying to dance, it is not good unless you're looking for a laugh. You had to pardon me, I'm really thirsty. Let me check really quick. Make sure it's still recording. Yay, we're still recording. Can't really see my canvas. But you can see I put some drills down, at least. Okay. What is a weird food combination that you do? Well, it's not weird to me. I don't... I don't know. Like, I can't do, like, french fries dunked in a Wendy's Frosty. I can't do that. Um, to some people, tater tots dipped in ketchup and mayonnaise might be weird, but it is delicious. I'm telling you. You need that in your life. It's so unhealthy, but it's so good. I started that back in high school, and I, it's still great to me to this day. Yum, 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 Even though I don't really do that anymore. I'm trying to, trying to lose weight. Trying to better myself, my physical being. But it is so hard, man, because I love food. That's, I guess, why, that's why to me, nothing I like, nothing I combine is weird. I'm pretty, pretty standard, pretty, pretty plain Jane, pretty boring. Other than the fact that I like to eat. Um, where's teas? Teas. Um, would you rather eat or drink your calories? Oh man. Um, eat. Because I think I would enjoy it more. <laughs> 
if all I could do was drink calories, it'd be so boring. Like, I'd have some of the flavor there, but the action of eating, the chewing, that'd be gone and I would totally miss it. Yeah, I can't do without food. Cutting back on calories has been hard enough on me. If I, could, if I had to cut out chewing food, no, that would suck. Would I rather someone go through my phone, text messages and everything, or go through your internet history? Well, um, kind of one of the same, because I use my phone for the internet. Um, but just because of banking information, I will say text messages. Like, if you were to go through my phone, pictures and texts and stuff, not including the internet history. Let's go through that because I don't have anything to hide. Except for my banking information. That's why I don't want you to go through my internet. Oops, you didn't pick up there. There we go. If you had to, if I had to choose never to use Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube again, which one would you let go? Well, I tried Twitter a while back, and I didn't like it. I, I, I just, I didn't get it. it. It wasn't enough pictures for me, okay? I don't like having to click on a link to be able to see a picture. Like, I want that instant gratification like Facebook has. And bam, there's your picture. Uh, Instagram, I've never had Instagram, so maybe I should check that out, I don't know, um, I don't know, but I'm just going to say Twitter because I tried it and didn't like it, so yes, I can definitely live without that. If I had to choose, how would you want to get famous? Uh, Maybe I get famous because I find a cure for cancer and I don't sell it to the pharmaceutical companies and make billions and billions of dollars and so they can turn around and make a cure into a medication that the people that need it the most can't afford. Um, I would want to do something like give it to the people for free um, or for just, you know. Here's the cure. Give me five dollars if you can. Thank you. So, you know, just, uh, the medical state right now, it, it kind of frustrates me. I've seen people talk about how there is a cure for cancer, but the pharmaceutical companies don't want people to have it yet because they're not going to make all their money off of it. And I don't know if that's true or not, but in my mind, I can understand it. It's business, unfortunately, which sucks because that leaves us, the people, suffering. <sighs> which languages do you speak? Um, English. And if I get on a roll, sarcasm. Smart assiness. I'm trying to kind of hold it back a little bit. I've not unleashed it, um, but if I get on a roll sometimes, I can just be a huge, huge smartass, and that's, that's one of my family traits, like, people on my dad's side of the family, smartasses, like, full-blown. I learned some of my best stuff from my uncles. Which languages do you wish you could speak? Wow. Uh, I mean, I guess maybe Spanish, since it is everywhere now. Um, that's kind of like Spanish is the future. All the jobs in the future, everybody's going to have to be bilingual. Um, but the shoe on the other foot also... Then people should have to speak English, too, here, in the United States. I think it should be fair across the board, and everybody has to learn another language. 
or at least attempt. What country do I wish I was from? Mm. Oh, I don't know. I'm not really sure what life in another country is like. I almost want to say Australia because, A, it's friggin' Australia and I want to go there. But, but they have like five million animals and insects that'll kill you. So maybe I don't want to be from there. I like to have their accent. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty happy being from America. America. Um, if I had a time machine, would I rather go back in time or into the future? Back in time. I would go back. Well, can I make several stops? Or can I only make one stop? I will say I can make several stops. I will go back to the last time that I saw some of my loved ones. And I would make it count more. Like, I would ask them more questions. I would make sure I tell them I love them. You know, I would try to just savor every moment and burn every image into my mind because I would know that that would be the last time I'd see them right because once once they're gone it's it's too late and you go through the the well if only I had done this or if only I had done that or yeah, you know, so it, it really is true what people say you know you got to make the most of each moment because you never know when it could be the last time you see somebody. Uh, it's it's a really, really suck-ass fact, and I apologize. That's the first time I've cussed. But it, it really is. I hate it. Pet koala or pet panda? Oh, jeez. They're both so cute. Um, pandas get big. Koalas stay kind of small. Koalas eat eucalyptus. Pandas eat bamboo. Eucalyptus stinks, I think. Bamboo has a smell, but it's not like a really, really nasty smell. I'm going to go with a panda. Yeah. Let's get us a panda bear to go with our unicorn. What is my usual bedtime? Um, whenever I get sleepy enough to fall asleep. I usually go get into bed anywhere from like 6.30 to 7. Um, my husband works, what they call it, third shift. So he wakes up at 11 o'clock at night to go into work. So he goes to sleep early. Um... So, I probably try to fall asleep between 9 and 9.30, but I'm usually in bed well before then. Because he claims he can't go to sleep without me being there beside him, and that's just so sweet. I'm going to throw up. Uh, what is an irrational fear you had as a child? Um, well, I don't know. I don't remember fears I had as a child, but I'll tell you what fears I have now as an adult that are irrational. Extremely irrational. The first one, I am terrified of static electricity. Like, when you walk across the carpet in the wintertime and you touch a metal doorknob and it shocks you, oh my god, it terrifies me to no end. I hate it. We have a, a stainless steel refrigerator at work and I will not touch the doors and open that refrigerator up without having some paper towels on my hand as like a protective shield and that's for two reasons number one for the static shock that i know is waiting me and number two 
because people in that office don't wash their hands and they got their nasty germs all over the handle of that refrigerator door and I don't want to touch it. But mostly for the static shock. Like even all our filing cabinets and stuff, mm-mm. I'm, I ain't touching them. Nope, 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 nope. Not gonna do it. Um, another irrational fear I have right now, balloons. I am terrified of balloons. Not the metallic looking, what they call mylar balloons. Those are okay. It's the latex balloons. And it's because of the popping. Oh, God, I had a really bad experience with them one time and I just... Mm -mm. Don't want to be around them ever. Mm -mm. No, no balloons. Um, I dated a guy one time. We were at a restaurant. Somebody was walking around making balloon animals. And he knew I was scared of balloons. And he thought it'd be funny to get them to come over to our table and make me a balloon animal. I got up and I left. I sure as hell did. I told him not to do it, that it wasn't funny. And he went and big fat did it anyway. Well, I left his butt sitting right there. And I don't know how he got home. And I don't care. Because he shouldn't have done that. So I'm genuinely terrified of the balloons. And then clowns. I mean, there's nothing scarier than a clown. And the last one is porcelain dolls. Which is weird. I used to collect them as a kid. I used to have them. On shelves all around my bedroom growing up but now as an adult they're all in boxes in my closet because um, I just can't can't I can't get rid of them yet but I don't want to see them either um, so yeah that is this weird combination for for a 38 year old woman I think but I don't think I'm alone in those fears I feel like there's probably quite a few people who share those fears with me. And we're not crazy because of it. What is my favorite fictional world? Oh, God, this is so hard. Um, I could say Star Wars. Any of the, I don't know the names of the planets and stuff. All I know is that when, when the movies are on... Like, I can watch them. Like, I dig Star Wars movies, but I'm not a total geek about it. Um, Harry Potter world, of course. I'm a pothead. Harry Potter pothead. Um, we can even go, like, my favorite television fictional world would be inside, like, with the people on Big Bang Theory. Like, I absolutely love them, and I hate that I can't watch them on a streaming service because CBS has them on their own streaming service, which costs like 60 some dollars a month, and I can't afford that. So now I just have to do with seeing my little snippets, little two or three minute clips on Facebook every now and then, and I'll let that satisfy my need for some laughter. But the, that whole show, like... I could totally be friends with those guys. What was the most significant event of your life? Um, that's a hard question. I had many significant events in my life. Many things happened that made me who I am today. Um, so we could say getting married, we could say, you know, becoming a parent and having that responsibility, we could say buying my own house on my own as a young 20-something year old, that'll wake you right up, let me tell you. Home ownership is awesome, but it's also, like, sucks at the same time. Because you're responsible for everything. Um, but, um, I don't know, getting a new, new jobs that I've gotten in the past. Buying, when I've been able to get a new car. Heck, I don't know. 
I try to take all of my life experiences, positive and negative, and make sure that they have some type of impact on my life. I guess I want to make sure that everything that I go through makes a difference. I don't want it to be for nothing. What was the last movie I watched? Well, I don't know if it counts as a movie or not, but my husband and I just actually, before I started doing this, watched the last um, Kevin Hart stand-up comedy special on Netflix. Oh. My. God. Hilarious. That man is hilarious. So if you like him, be sure to check that out. Um, can't remember what the name of it was. Um, I don't know. I can find out real quick. It was Kevin Hart. What was it? Um, dang. Well, my TV changed screens. I don't know where it was. Anyway, y'all can find it. The, one of the Kevin Hart specials on, up there. <clears throat> Will you want to be remembered after you die? Well, don't we all want to be remembered? I think so. Um, that's one part of the movie Coco that made me sad. Um, I hope you've seen it. If you haven't, I'm sorry if I spoil it right now, but that made me sad because that's, that, that's what was ultimately killing him. What was his name? Uh, what was the grandpa's name in there? Shoot. But anyway, he was dying because Coco was forgetting him. And I was like, oh man, that kind of hit home. That tugged at my heartstrings a little bit. Thank you, Disney. Um, have you ever been so happy that you cried? Um, yes. I'm sure of it. I'm not a completely cold-hearted person. Even though I try to hold my emotions in. I try not to show them. But I am, I'm a very emotional person. Let me check you guys again. Hey, we're still recording. Yay. Um. Oh, have you ever been so happy that you cried? Well, if you watch the second whip and chat that I attempted to do yesterday, it cut off at the end when um, my daughter Kendall said something and that legit made me tear up and cry. Happy tears. Um, yeah, she really does amaze me every day. Like, she, she's a great kid. Have you ever won anything? And if so, what? Well, actually, yeah. Um, do you know what Funko Pops are? They're those, like, some people, you know, them little bobblehead figures that come in a box like this big, right? And they've got them. Um, they're these little plastic toys, essentially. But they're made of they're figurines of from all kinds of movies and TV shows and cartoons and video games and comic books and, oh, geez, just about anything you could think of. They try to make a Funko Pop vinyl thing out of um well there's a facebook page that is run by the company right and my husband and me and, my, and our daughter we just started collecting these things uh right before christmas we had a funko popsmas um but on their on the funko facebook page just about every friday they do a little live televised broadcast and they do a giveaway well on the very first Funko Friday live Facebook feed that I watched 
the deal is they're showing off some products and stuff that they're just coming out with and or some of the highly sought after things and putting this price pack together, right? The box full of stuff, all kinds of different items that they have that they make. And in order to win, all that you not that you have to do is in the comments on that feed is just leave a positive comment, right? Just anything positive. And the guy that does the Facebook feed, Sully is his name. He'll scroll through and he will pick a positive comment and whoever made that positive comment wins that week's prize pack. Well, doggone it, I won a prize pack by just leaving a positive little comment. I didn't think anything of it. I didn't really do it to win. I just did it because I was super excited that we were about to have Christmas and we were about to get our first pops. And just, it was going to be awesome, right? And I just stumbled across their Facebook group. I was just pumped. So that's all my comment was about, really. It was just us and as a family and our experience and can't wait for Christmas and yada yada. Well, he picked my comment. And I won. I won an awesome prize pack. Totally unexpected. But let me tell you, it was amazing. And if I could win again, I would. Because that is a company that takes care of their fans, right? Um, they, you know, oh, I don't know. If you're into collecting stuff, just, just drop by the Funko, F-U-N-K-O website. And check them out if you don't know what they are. Um, but I, don't blame me if you start collecting, okay? Because it's not my fault that they're so awesome. If I had to get married to the last friend that I texted, how would it go? Um, well, the last friend that I texted was my husband, actually, so it go great. <laughs> or at least so far when you're in, it's gone great. <clears throat> would I ever go on a blind date? Well, I have in the past. And it's a bit nerve-wracking. Um, I've gone on a couple of different types of blind dates. Like, I've gone on the blind date where you're set up by a friend. But at least with those, you know, at least you're talking, you know somebody that knows this person. Um, I've gone on a, I'll, I'll say a blind date um, with online dating. And I, I'm calling it a blind date because... You don't really know who you're talking to until you do meet them in person. Um, that didn't go over so well. It, it, it just, you know, some sometimes you soar, sometimes you crash and burn. It just crashed and burned. And I hated to do it, but this is the only time I had to call in a favor from a friend. She called my cell phone with an emergency and got me out of there because I was just like, there is no way I can stay here. I just could, I couldn't do it. I couldn't sit through the rest of the day. Like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Which, I hate that I was such a coward about it. <laughs> and I wasn't just honest about it. But again, folks, this was, this was me like seven, eight years ago. This is the old me. I think I, I could do a little bit better now. At least I hope I would. That goes back to me not wanting to hurt anybody's feelings, too. I don't want to be mean. Do I mind getting famous even if it's from bad publicity? Hell yes, I mind. If it's from, if it's bad. I don't want to be known for something bad. Uh, I already went through something along those lines several years ago. I don't want to really get into it, but... It was a really bad time. It was uh, probably about four years ago now. And I had some people that were just being the worst to me because they didn't agree with the decision that I made. This was people on the internet, of course. 
that don't know me, I don't know them, but they're going to sit there behind their keyboard and be all big and bad and whatever, whatever. But it got, it got really bad. It got really personal. Like, I got a lawyer involved. I went and I talked to the sheriff's department because these people were seriously talking about wanting my address. They were going to come and get the sheriff to come out here and arrest me. And I'm like, okay. First of all, get all your facts straight. Because I, I promise you, I did nothing wrong legal-wise. Um, so there's no way I would have gotten in trouble. But I'm just like, you people just need to back up. But having all that attention on me over something so negative... And, uh, you know, I wasn't, I'm not saying that I was famous during that or anything, but it felt like every time I turned around, my name was in somebody's mouth. And I'm just like, you know, just please, you know, please move on to something else. Won't somebody else please do something to distract these fools and get them away from me? But eventually, of course, it all died down and then I met my husband and the rest is history. <laughs> I guess I'd come out on the, big, on the good side of that. Wow, okay, that was all those questions. Oh, let me see how much more time I have. Because I'm going to make that hour. 46 minutes in. Okay, I can do a few more minutes. So, let me think. So, let me just say real quick, how about this? How did I get into diamond painting? I mean, that's a good question, right? I'm curious to know how just about, you know, everybody gets involved in it. Well, what happened was, a long time ago, <laughs> like, let's say two years ago, my husband started playing a mobile game. It was a mobile game for The Walking Dead, right? Well, it got so that Basically, to just put it out there, he was playing his game and ignoring me. So I was like, what the heck is so interesting on this game, right? I was being needy. You know, I was a stage three clinger, you know. Pay attention to me. So I go and I download the same game. And I start playing it. Well, eventually it turned into something that we did enjoy doing together. And it was really cool. We killed zombies, of course, but we also fought against other people. But in the game, there is a chat. And so you get to know people through the game. Then, of course, we were chatting with some of these people outside of the game in another chatting app on our phone. One of them was Kick, and the other one was Line. But anyway, you, you, you start getting to know people, and they're from all over the world. And again, I know it's still the internet. You still don't know how much you can trust them. But we have fun. And one of the women that we got to know through the game is from England. And she's a very crafty person. Um, she crochets. She knits. Um, and I'm not sure what all else she does. But one day she was in chat. She said something about a diamond picture. And I was like, what are you talking about a diamond picture? And so she sent me an example. She took a picture of something and sent it to me. And I was like, hold up. What is this now? Explain. So she told me a little bit about it. And so I went to Google. And I started looking and looking. And I just was like chomping at the bit. I gotta try it. I gotta try it. Well, this was right before Christmas last year. And so I told my husband, I was like, I want some of this for Christmas. I really want to try it because it looks like I would enjoy it, right? So he even ended up getting me the two peacocks that I picked out. And uh, I guess the kind of the rest is history, right? Because now I'm hooked. Um... You know, in looking at Google and trying to learn some about diamond painting, I also went to YouTube and started watching a couple of videos that popped up. One of the very first videos I ever watched about diamond painting was actually one of Ella's.
from kicking cancer's butt and diamond painting. Um, one of her videos was one of the very first ones I ever saw. And then you know how YouTube will suggest videos for you and stuff. And from there, I found some other people. And then, you know, they would mention people that also are YouTubers in their videos. And just, you know, kind of went from there. So, I still got a long way to go before I get caught up on anybody's videos. But I'm enjoying watching everybody's content and what they put out and learning about people and I don't know one reason I figured I'd start doing a YouTube channel is because well as I said the you know previously is Wendy from gone off my med says you know just do it you know quit talking about it quit thinking about it and just do it and I was thinking well maybe that'll help me socially like, I'm sitting out here by myself right now like a crazy person talking to my camera. But if I get used to having conversations, then maybe I won't be so awkward in situations where I'm first meeting people. Maybe I'll be able to think of something to bring up as a subject, right? And not be quite so socially awkward. But, who am I kidding? I don't go out. <laughs> I don't do anything but work and come home. Uh, that's okay. I had my time to to break free and party it up and, you know. But I'm, I'm a wife now and I'm a mother now, so I need to calm down. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Um. Uh, no, I just need to be responsible, but I don't need to lose who I am, right? Oh, gosh. I'm telling you. This is very hard. Trying to diamond paint and talk at the same time. Because one thing I I do when I diamond paint is I, I tune everything out. Nothing exists in the world but me and my painting. Whatever project I'm currently working on. Like... This one, I cannot wait to meet this sweet little baby. I just, you know, every time I'm, I work on this, I'm just thinking about that little face of his. He's got an older brother that I absolutely adore. Who, how old is he now? I want to say maybe he's four years old. Um, but just from the, the profile that's in this diamond painting of the new baby... He looks just like his older brother. Um, I just I just can't wait to see him. One of my co-workers just came back from maternity leave herself. So many babies all around. Like, no, nah, I, I got my hands full. Keep that away from me. I'm I'm good. I'm good. I don't uh, I don't need no babies around here. No little babies. Not permanently. You know, I'll watch them for a little bit, but nah. That's a, that's about all I'm up for. Dang, it's only been a couple minutes. Jeez. Okay. All right. All right. You know what? I may need to do this. Let me see. It's so hard to find questions that don't repeat themselves. It's so hard. Why is it so hard for me to have an original thought, you know? I could be asking myself that question. Jeez. Because I don't do anything but go to work. All I think about is work. I'm one of those, you know, mindless drones. Just a little worker bee. Oh, that's a lot. Why you asking me what's the worst thing about YouTube? I don't know. I haven't been around long enough to say anything bad about it. Other than the fact that it took me forever to figure out how to use the darn thing. I'm telling you, there was one lady that is part of Miss Crochet and Coffee and Rachel Ray's Facebook group, Crafters Anonymous. I want to say her name is Tia. We were chatting one time a little while back about how to 
go to the live feed and actually chat. And I'm like, I don't have a chat. I can't figure it out. My phone hates me. Well, no, I finally figured out what the problem was. See, my old tail didn't realize that because I was looking at YouTube through my web browser on my phone, there was no chat. You have to go to the app on your phone. But I'm like, no, wait a minute. I don't have the YouTube app. I never downloaded that on my phone. Oh, you poor, poor, old, crazy person. Um, no, it, it came on my phone. It's like built in to the phone when I got it. And I did not know this. Um, so I felt really, really dumb. You were so dumb. But I'm glad I know now, right? <laughs> because I'm able to see some of the antics and speak every once in a while to say hello and some of the live feeds and stuff. But man, I'll tell you what, during that DPFON last weekend, you know, I talked a little bit, but I was trying to focus on the task, trying to get some work done on this bad boy. Because what's today? Tuesday. So I have to, I need to have this done so I can frame it. Saturday morning because I want to give it to her Saturday afternoon. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to make it, you guys. I'm going to try really, really hard. But I don't want to just rush through it and do a crap job just so I can get it done by then. You know what I mean? She's one of my best friends, and she knows I'm working on something for her. She doesn't know what. But I don't want to rush through it just to get it done and, you know, not be satisfied with it. Come here, you. <sighs> so if I have to wait a little bit longer to give it to her, I will. I was just, you know, really wanting to give it to her Saturday. I'm going over there because I'm taking them a meal. Um, I don't know if, you know, anybody else has heard of this program, but there's a website or something. It's called Take Them a Meal. I've never heard about it. But I guess it's, you know, after people have a baby, you sign up on this website and it has a calendar of who's going to take them at dinner on specific days or something. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So, I signed up to take them dinner Saturday night. And that's why I was like, oh, I can get this done by then. I'm Wonder Woman. I can do it. Yeah. No, Bobby the Builder, you can't. No. Hmm. We shall see. I'm not giving up yet. Oh, what time are we at, you guys? Because my throat is starting to hurt. Oh, we're at 58 minutes. Oh, my God. I'm actually going to get it done. Like, the one-hour whip and chat challenge. I'm recording this one full hour. I really hope my phone doesn't screw up and not upload it. Because I want to have that success story under my belt like I want to have met that goal you know I, I don't think that I'll be doing the face mask challenge I wasn't invited to and, I, and I'm kind of glad for that because um I just put this out here I, I I've got some granny hairs going on on my chin area and I can't get the dang things with tweezers but it's like I see them in the mirror right I don't know, maybe I do need to do a face mask. Maybe they ripped them suckers out of me. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like pain. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know about all that. I might just have to go back to using the little facial hair trimmers. Keep my mustache lined up. <laughs> oh, God, look at me. Okay, well, I'm going to finish this up. I'm super proud I got through this. That is one goal I met. Yay, me. All right. Thank you, guys. Anybody who watched this all the way through, I appreciate you. Uh, I'm getting a little bit of momentum here. So, I'm going to finish this part up, and I'm going to go snuggle in bed, I think, with the mister. So, until next time, we'll see you guys later.